Hello, my name is Scott Overpeck, and I'm the Warning Coordination Meteorologist with the National Weather Service Office in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And for Monsoon Awareness Week, we are going to discuss heat impacts and heat-related illnesses and how to stay safe in the heat. As we know, we hit into the June and July months. Uh, a lot of the southwestern United States heats up, temperatures get very hot. And so we have asked one of our partners with the New Mexico Department of Health, Stephanie Moraga McHaley, and she, she is joining us to uh, discuss some heat safety tips. Stephanie, you mind telling us a little bit more about what you do at the Department of Health? Hi, yes, Scott, thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm the program manager for the New Mexico Environmental Public Health Tracking Program at the New Mexico Department of Health. Well, great. We appreciate you being with us and being able to help explain some heat safety tips. So first question, just pretty generic. What are some heat related illnesses? What are the symptoms? What's the difference between heat exhaustion, heat stroke, and how often do these occur? So heat-related illnesses are adverse health effects that are brought about by high ambient temperatures, whether indoors or outdoors. Uh, the spectrum of heat-related illness can range from heat rash and heat sunburn, or sunburn to heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and most severely heat stroke. With heat exhaustion, you see heavy sweating, cold, pale, clammy skin, and a fast, weak pulse. But with heat stroke, a person's core temperature begins to rise dangerously um, up to 103 degrees or more. And their skin will be hot and red and they will have a fast, strong pulse and they may act confused. Symptoms for both um, that are common include nausea, dizziness and headache. Besides death, heat related illness can cause permanent adverse health effects such as brain, heart and kidney damage. That's some great information. Great to you know, have to be able to keep track of your body when you're outside and those types of things. So it's good to have those kinds of things in our mind when we're working outside. Speaking of working outside, you know, it is June now, getting ready to be July, hitting that peak time that we're getting the, the hot temperatures during the summer. As we get further into July, what are some things that, uh, some advice that you can give people looking to stay safe from the heat? Well, the primary way to prevent heat-related illness is to stay hydrated, stay in the shade, and take rest breaks if you're working or playing outside. And it's best to drink plain water to stay hydrated as drinks with caffeine, alcohol, or a lot of sugar can be dehydrating. And staying hydrated is especially important for older adults and small children as their metabolism is less efficient. Uh, plan outdoor activities for earlier or later parts of the day when there's less heat or move activities indoors. Communities need to check on those who are homebound or elderly to assure they're not suffering in the heat. And people who are homeless or who have inadequate shelter should be provided shade and hydration as well. So those are, those are some great tips, especially the hydration. And that's something that even the workforce has to keep in mind. So do you have any tips for outdoor workers, construction workers, those that work in Warehouses, what can they do to recognize the symptoms? And if they do recognize the symptoms, what can they do? Sure. Well, outdoor workers really need to have a plan in place to prevent heat related illness and a plan for what to do if heat related illness occurs. So, employers need to make sure there's adequate shade for workers to rest and plan for frequent hydration breaks and provide water. Allow workers to acclimate slowly to rising temperatures by increasing their exposure slowly over time. Uh, train workers on how to recognize the symptoms of heat-related illness in themselves and the signs in their coworkers, so they know what, and have them know what to do if they experience HRI, heat-related illness. Uh, call 911 immediately if a person appears to be in the heat stroke, as this is a life-threatening condition. Great. Those are some, some fantastic ideas to keep in mind. We're going to kind of shift gears because, you know, during the summer, people run a lot of errands. So what about vehicle safety? 
Well, you know, it's really important to keep kids out of hot cars because the temperature can rise 20 degrees in a matter of minutes. Um, so make sure your keys are always um, inaccessible to children and the car is always locked. And on hot, sunny days when you're running errands and making what you think are quick stops, everyone needs to get out of the car. Just make that the rule. And that includes children of all ages, adults, elders, and your pets. And keep water with you to hydrate between stops. Stephanie, those are great tips. And we appreciate you being here with us, being willing to talk with us about heat safety. You know, if I had to sum up things, uh, it sounds like we really do need to have a plan to stay safe, uh, know what the symptoms are of heat-related illnesses are, stay hydrated, and all these things really do apply for the southwestern U.S. and really anywhere across the United States that's dealing with the heat. So we thank you for your time and, and appreciate you being able to, to talk with us. Well, thanks for having me, Scott. Take care. Thank you.